Hey everyone, this is Kerb and I bring you another V Premium match from our the tournament at our locals. Uh, right here we're going to be seeing the finals. We have both players being XO here. Uh, on the left we do have my teammate Ryuki playing his Regalia deck. Once again, the same deck that he uh, played in BCS Anaheim 2022 and did get top 8 with. And on the right we are actually going to be having Luard. Definitely another good meta pick to be playing. Um, even in this new V meta. Uh, we are going to see him riding the... Oh god, what's it called? It's not a Bilal Owl, it's the other one, the grade one. Uh, I forget its name. Anyways, <laughs> it's basically just a 5k. Uh, if its effect comes up, I'll explain it. Uh, actually going to be going for the Ildona, uh, discarding it in order to check top 10. And then since there are two or more grade 3s there, uh, you can actually add a grade 2 or higher, which turns out to be another Eldona. Uh, so we're actually going to be adding that Eldona, and looks like we are just going to be activating the skill right away. Uh, checking that top 10 yet again, and verifying that there's two grade 1s, as well as adding a grade 2 or greater. Uh, honestly, this uh, Edona card, the card we got off the last V Clan collection, is honest, is really one of the cards that makes Luard kind of just playable again. As you're going to see in a little bit, um, the real reason why it's making the deck so much better than, or basically pushing it back up to the same level that it was uh, when it first came out. So, moving back to Ryuki, he's going to be riding into the Ordain Owl, getting that quick shield. Um, and it looks like we are actually going to be calling out a VAR and then using the VAR skill when it boosts to give itself a Divine Gauge. Hitting a heal trigger off there, obviously it doesn't go off, but it is a nice heal guard. And heal guards are definitely something that you want uh, going second and especially against Luard. Uh, we're just going to see him ride into a Morfessa, just swing, not get any triggers, um, and just pass. Now we do see an, a Norn going into the damage zone and another one being ridden, which means that there's only two left in rotation or at least in the deck uh looks like we are going to be using that norn skill to draw a card uh we don't have any soul so we can't div oh divine gauge anything but we are going to be using the uh var skill in order to discard its divine gauge uh soul charge three and retire itself to counter charge uh now we are going to see two more uh threads actually called out and honestly, this situation is just a little bit awkward uh, because in case you don't know, Thrud has a skill where after it attacks, you can put into the soul, uh, give its divine gauge to something else, and then you do actually get to draw a card. Uh, so that is two Thruds that you would be able to using, use a skill and kind of just like bounce your divine gauges all around. However, that Ordain Owl actually does have a very similar skill where at the end of the battle where it boosts, you can actually slide itself back into the soul and draw a card. Uh, as we're going to see here, Thread's going to give the Divine Gauges to Darn Owl, but then the Ordain Owl is just going to go into the soul. And because it left the board, uh, those Divine Gauges are actually just going to fall off. So moving back into the Luar turn, looks like he is going to be getting the correct ride target, riding into that uh, Dragheart Luar. Uh, so now all he really has to do is set up that drop zone to the point where he can actually uh, use the skill effectively. Uh, looks like we are going to be over calling the drag uh, driver with a Leofall and using the Leofall skill to the counter blast one, uh, searching the deck for any grade one and superior calling it to an open regard circle. Looks like the call target is going to be that Karen, uh, which is going to be activating the Karen skill, uh, which allows you to. Does it cost Soul Blast? I don't think it does. Honestly, uh, basically what it does is it, it gets an extra of 30k in case you don't know, and it actually lets you counter charge as well. Yeah, it does cost a soul. I was right. Um, just going to be counter charging there, getting an extra 3. Uh, it is a 7k base, but that does make it a 10k booster when you use the skill. It looks like with that Soul Blast, we did actually hit that 3 grade 1 um, that we needed. The two Idonas are going to be counting as grade 1s, which is one of the reasons why they are just so... make Luard so much better. Um, so we're going to be using that drag heart skill uh counter blasting three but it's reduced by one counter blast for every grade one in the drop zone at this point it is three so we are going to actually be able to um just put back the drag heart or not yeah yeah the drag driver as well as the owl and then superior ride the drag driver from the deck get a force marker and then using the drag drivers on play skill which is counter blast one and call um 
grade ones equal to the number of luards in your soul plus one so since there's one luard in the soul uh it's gonna be two so he's gonna be calling out it looks like an apocalypse bat as well as that uh, i want to call it pain painter but that's a Yu-Gi-Oh card uh no it's called nightmare painter uh which is another card that works with Edona because you can slide that Edona into the soul and now that you actually have the two grade threes in the soul um all of your grade one units that are on board get an extra crit well they don't get an extra crit they actually their original critical becomes two which basically means that you can't use it with force two because they're just gonna be stay at um an original critical of two so it doesn't uh really matter with the force two which is why Luard always goes for the force one anyways um it's looking like the hand isn't the greatest. We did see an Edona come down, but Edona actually is only treated as a grade one when it is in the drop zone or the soul, I believe. Uh, I know it's in two locations, but it's definitely not the rear guard. Uh, just going to be swinging with that Apocalypse Bat. Now that we have those two grade threes in soul, it is going to be a 17 with two damage. So it looks like we are just going to be taking it. Actually, damage checking an Angel and another Norn. Uh, gonna be swinging with that drag strider just gonna be hit with a heal guardian negging it to critical um it is normally just a one crit attack so this is gonna be a negative one critical so unless we hit two crits it is not going to be uh popping off seeing a draw trigger there um going after going on to leofall uh leofall is gonna be swinging for just one damage because it is not a grade one um unfortunately for the luard player uh but it's just gonna be hit with another heal guardian which is gonna neg it two crit so obviously that attack's not going through uh and is gonna rewrite the drag heart and get another force marker uh which is definitely concerning if you are playing regalias uh, if, or if you're playing against luard i should say uh because the longer the game goes on the more force markers they actually just accumulate and the harder attacks are to uh just like block and so the the key to fighting luard is you kind of have to finish it as quickly as you can anyways uh getting into the, getting back to uh riku's turn we do see him riding into the frig counter blasting one and calling a regalia off the top five which lets him divine gauge it um and then the Luri skill actually has a skill when it's placed on rear where you can take two regalias from or i believe it's two cards uh from your drop zone and you do actually get to slide them back into the soul uh so it looks like we are just using one of the yggdrasil skill to call out the last norn from the deck uh calling it behind the vanguard probably going to be swinging with that um vanguard twice uh using the skill to divine gauge both the norn as well as the yggdrasil uh going to be using that norn skill to draw a card divine gauge onto the norn itself and soul charge two more so it looks like we are next up calling out that skull, checking top five. Looks like it's going to be a complete whiff. No grade threes. So going into the battle, looks like we are going to be swinging uh, with that Vanguard first. It is a total of 28 thanks to the Norn's boost because Freak gives an extra 5k, so it is a 15k booster. Um, so we do only have the one Norn on board, which means our rear guards aren't going to be standing. However, this Freak is going to be swinging for a double critical. Uh, so we're going to get the drive check, Ordain out, and a critical trigger. Looks like we're going to be giving all effects to the Vanguard uh, using the Norn skill to restand it and swing once again for 23. Uh, this time for three damage, we're going to drive check. One drive. Everything. I Four fucking damage. knew it! And that is going to be the end of the game. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to do all those YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.